We've already solved for sides, so what's left in the triangle? Solving for angles. Very good. Okay, so you can draw this triangle. So this time, the starting point is a little bit different. What is my starting point for this particular question? Ruby, what do you think your starting point is? So it's not the angle that you're, you've been given, the angle that you've been asked to find. So, yes, it says find angle A. So whenever you're solving for an angle, the angle that you've been asked to find is your starting point. That means after I solve this triangle, if they ask me to also solve for angle C, I have to then erase everything and relabel the whole triangle, okay? Because my, whenever your starting point changes, that's when you have to relabel the triangle. Okay, Gabby, what is the slanted side? Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. And other Gabrielle, what is this starting point side? The side connected, the adjacent. Good. My two Gabbies. Okay, so I have my adjacent, my hypotenuse. That means that this is my opposite. Okay. We are solving for angles this time, so that means we can't use the whole question mark, check mark thing. It's going to be a little bit e easier. Check mark, check mark. You're always going to remember, if you blank out on a test, even though it seems so simple, that's what it is going to help you come out of your blackout, is because you're going to remember, question mark, check mark for the side, check mark, check mark for solving for an angle. Because the check mark, check mark means what are the names of the two sides that I know the value of. So Isabella, what are the names of the two sides here that I know the value of? Okay, so my adjacent and my hypotenuse. Those are the two sides I know the value of. So what is the only trig ratio that involves adjacent and hypotenuse? Oh, hold on. Sorry, one second. Let's change this a little bit, guys, because it's too easy. We've already done this. So let's make, instead of that, let's make the 3.3 .3 this side. My mistake. 3.3 .3 is going to be that side. So we're going to change it up. Instead of adjacent over hypotenuse, we're going to use opposite over hypotenuse to solve this. We're going to pretend this is the side 3.3. .3. Opposite over hypotenuse. So what is the trig ratio that involves opposite and hypotenuse? Victoria, what do you think? Yes, so my, and I'm, you're the first person that hasn't said sin today. It's the sine ratio. So sine of angle A is equal to opposite over the hypotenuse. We're going to use this to solve for angle A. Angle A is my un only unknown. That's what we're trying to solve for. So I'm going to fill in the rest. Sine of angle A is equal to 3.3 .3 over 5.3. 3.3 over 5.3. So in some ways this is easier because we don't have to do any cross multiplying. However, this problem is going to have an extra step. The reason we don't have to do any cross multiplying is because I don't have a letter on the right hand side or a variable. I only have numbers. So you can simply plug into your calculator 3.3 .3 divided by 5.3 and you're going to get 0 0.62267A. It's going to be a lot of numbers. To get the most accurate answer when you're solving for angles, always keep four decimal places until you get to the final answer. The final answer can have one decimal place, but in your process, you can keep four decimal places. Even in university, they'll tell you that. Four decimal places when you're doing trigonometry to get the most accurate answer that's closest to your textbook answer. 
So on your calculator, you're going to get a whole bunch of decimal places. I just kept the first four. No need to round or anything, just the first four decimal places that you see, okay? So does that mean that angle A is 0 0.62 degrees? That's less than one degree. That sounds like awfully small. That's not the case. There's an extra step when you're solving for angles. So I'm not interested in sine A. I'm interested in angle A. So if you have a calculator out, get it, well, get it out and look at it. I always draw a rectangle around this next instruction because I want it to look like a button that you press on your calculator. This is called the sine inverse, and to get that on your calculator, you're going to punch second function, second function sine, and then the sine button. Second function sine. And this is called, I should write this down because everyone always forgets it, the sine inverse. You can do the same thing with cosine to get the cosine inverse, tangent to get the tan inverse. But this is how we go from decimal to angle measure. So if I punch in second function sine, I get the sine inverse on my calculator, and I type in 0.6226, this number that was right here, you're going to get an answer for the angle measure. Angle A is equal to 38.5 degrees. So that's how we move from the sine ratio to what and the measure of angle A, okay? It's very, very important. When you're doing your homework, when you're doing your test, draw a little rectangle to remind yourself that it's a button that you need to press, okay? Button on your calculator. Um, some of you have to go for a game. So, let me just give... Does anyone else need to go for softball right now? No? We're good? Okay, we're going to do one more practice problem of this to make sure that you really understand the concept. And it's the exact same uh, type of situation, just a different triangle. Good thing to um, mention, when you are doing your unit guide, unit 14 does not have a test. I expect to see you draw all the triangles because if you're studying from your unit guide for the final exam, you're going to have no idea what's going on if you don't know what the triangle looks like. So draw the triangles, show all of your steps. Okay, fine. we're doing one more angle question. Okay, what is my starting point for this question? Notice I always ask you the same thing. What is my starting point? Let's ask Rukshana, what's my starting point? What is the angle that you've been asked to find? Yes, so angle B is my starting point. Now we can label the entire triangle according to that starting point. Um, let's see, Allison. What is this slanted side called? The hypotenuse. And the uh, side that is connected to my starting point, Mariah, what is that called? Side connected. Sorry? Adjacent. Good. So not the same ratio that we used before. To find an angle, remember, I'm using check mark, check mark. That means what are the names of the two sides that I know the value of, and we've already written it down, the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So what is the only trig ratio that involves adjacent and hypotenuse? Diana. Yes, cosine. So you're not going to just write cosine. So many times I see kids write cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. You can't forget what your starting point is. So you have to write the cosine of my starting point. And if you notice, I know the value of my adjacent. I know the value of my hypotenuse. The only thing I don't know the value of is my cos B. Cosine of B is equal to my adjacent, which is 17, 
over my hypotenuse, which is 22. 